Looks like I'm doing better, 98.6. And that's good because I don't think that this is related, but I did want to share this information with you just so that you were aware of what was happening, what was going on. Foreign policy states that China's next epidemic is already here. Chinese hospitals are housing another deadly outbreak and authorities are covering up the spread of antibiotic resistant pneumonia. And this is very important and late breaking. And right now in Beijing and other mega cities in China, hospitals are overflowing with children suffering from pneumonia or similar severe ailments. So right now, I'm probably you're, you're all probably asking the same questions. And I know that the answers that we're all wanting to know from these questions, like how concerning is the spike in respiratory illnesses in China? And what is the latest from the WHO or the World Health Organization based on the results that they received in return from the data collected on clusters of pneumonia in kids? Plus, massive alerts from Bloomberg that say China's pneumonia outbreak shows we need a pandemic warning system. Is this information new to you? Have you seen or heard anything about this so far? If so, I'd love to know. Your thoughts down in the comments section below. And for all the latest and most important and breaking information, smash the like button and subscribe. Just takes a second. All right. So there are new developments about a concerning health situation happening right now in China, where hospitals in major cities like Beijing are witnessing a surge in pneumonia cases among children. This increase is officially attributed to usual winter illnesses usual winter illnesses exacerbated by the end of strict c19 rona measures however uh out of wuhan however the there's speculation that china is facing a more serious problem and that is the rise of antibiotic resistant mycoplasma pneumoniae or mpp which is a bacteria responsible for pneumonia uh uh it's almost like where's Dr. Anthony Fauci when you need him, right? MPP, known for decades and typically causing mild symptoms, has become a focal point due to its resistance to most antibiotics. The situation is worsened by the phenomenon of what is called something called immunity debt, and which is where children less exposed to pathogens during the C-19 lockdowns are now more susceptible to infections. And the surge in MPP cases began in the early summer in China, leading to heightened surveillance as a result of their weakened immune systems. And now, and now, just now, we are now finally hearing about it. They kept that under wraps. Um, and as always, with outbreaks, always, the sooner you know, the better. So essentially, we have a lot of catching up to do, right? Now, a key concern is the mutation of the M pneumonia into a strain resistant to uh, macrolides, which are the only safe antibiotics for children, according to reports, under the age of eight. And Beijing has downplayed this. And right now, the WHO is, has assessed the risk as low, although not fully addressing the issue of the antibiotic resistance. And that says a lot. Perhaps maybe this is some form of testing, maybe some some form of, of mass testing for what could potentially be some some new way of uh, breaching systems and reaching so many more. And depending on who you ask, there are valid arguments from both sides on separate trains of thought and also backed by science and medicine and history that this resistance is a significant threat, citing high rates of macrolide resistant MPP in China. And I have also seen, heard, and read plenty of pushback against actions and recommendations of the WHO for not pressing China for more information on antibiotic resistance in the current outbreak and suggests that China's history of underreporting and lack of transparency, especially evident, just like we saw during the last Rona 19 outbreak, which 
from the looks of it may be repeating itself and it stresses the global threat posed by antibiotic resistant microbes and the need for urgent action to address this growing problem. A growing problem that could theoretically spread and transport around the globe unknowingly as people uh, are traveling and hopping on airplanes and flying internationally in and out of China. So for now, I think it's important to focus on staying safe, okay? And some of the best ways that I plan to protect myself and my family from these dangerous respiratory illnesses include practicing good hygiene with regularly hand washing my hands and regular hand washing with soap and water being one of the most effective ways to prevent the spread of infections and using alcohol-based hand sanitizers if soap and water are not available. Now, I don't want to overdo it there and find myself in a similar situation of being uh, isolated and uh, in this lockdown state where you actually don't get exposed to any of the illnesses. And then that just puts your immune system uh, at a disadvantage. So uh, respiratory etiquette, I mean, this is just basic simple stuff. We were actually watching Nate Bargetzi and he was joking about how his parents like to do this uh, as they're older and they just kind of do this uh, normally and naturally. But uh, honestly, when you're out, cover your mouth and nose. Uh, when you're coughing or sneezing, cover your mouth and nose with a tissue or at the very least the inside of your elbow um, and dispose of tissues immediately and wash your hands afterwards. Don't forget to clean and wipe down any surfaces that you may have sprayed on or something. Uh, it's kind of, it is kind of odd sometimes we're trying to eat dinner or anywhere, lunch, dinner, breakfast, doesn't matter. And you hear somebody behind you just like coughing, hacking up a lung. And it's just like, man, it's like, is this what we have to listen to while we try to eat? But also avoid close contact with sick people. So uh, stay away from me. I'm just joking. You saw the number. I'm not sick anymore. Keep the, your distance from those who are sick, and if you are ill, stay home to prevent spreading the illness to others. And unfortunately, people don't always display visual signs and symptoms of being sick, and they can also be sick and carrying and transporting their germs and illnesses and sickness unknowingly. So it's almost kind of like you got to stay away from everybody, but uh, keep your immune system strong. A healthy diet, regular exercise, adequate sleep, and stress management can bolster your immune system. I think I'm going to drink some OJ here before I go to sleep. Avoid touching face. Uh, try to avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth as these are common entry points for viruses and bacteria, especially if your hands aren't thoroughly cleaned. Regular cleaning and these regular cleanings and disinfectant, disinfection of surfaces frequently touched by objects and these services like doorknobs, light switches, and smartphones will definitely help. Adequate ventilation is huge. Ensure good ventilation in indoor environments. Open windows. Use air purifiers to reduce concentration of indoor pollutants and pathogens. And something that some people kind of overlook, maybe need to set a schedule or alarm on your phone or your calendar, is change your air, air filters in your HVAC systems because they get pretty dirty and uh, you want them to be able you want them to be clean and able to filter the the germs and most importantly stay informed okay keep up with the latest health advisories from trusted sources uh maybe the uh, who and your local health department uh the three-letter agency cdc and uh Remember, these practices are not only beneficial for protecting against respiratory illnesses like the flu and common cold, but also against other airborne diseases, including the Rona. Now, I do like to pay attention to all of these alerts and heads ups and uh, warnings and medical journals and all these different things. And then I will form my own opinion based on the information that's provided or not. Now, there are some folks out there who would prefer we go the extreme route of introducing mandates and enforcing lockdowns again and ramping back up social distancing along with uh, wearing masks and wearing masks, you know, the folks that were wearing masks alone in their cars or wearing masks while they were taking a shower or wearing two masks, which was kind of crazy. Uh, but wearing masks, especially in crowded or poorly ventilated areas, they say can help to reduce the spread of airborne illnesses. I'm not arguing that 
just want to make that clear. I'm only uh, sharing with you what they say. And even going to the extreme and talking about the V word, uh, <coughs> stay up to date with recommendation, recommend, recommended is what they say, including the shot and any other means that protect against respiratory infections. Now, this is not medical advice. This is not any of that. I'm only sharing with you some of the strategies of staying uh healthier and uh, avoiding contracting illnesses from some of these surfaces and, and the spread of certain germs. But to each their own, folks. I don't want to go into too much detail on here because you guys know how they are about this type of stuff. And uh, I will just, I'll remind you that there is a Patreon where we share more information about these certain things without restriction and censorship. And I will, I'll put a link down in the description. Uh, but what we must remember uh, is that all of this information is still evolving and we aren't being provided the full story in a timely manner. So stay tuned to reliable sources that you know and you can trust. And thank you guys for watching. Until next time, stay safe, stay smart, get ready and be prepared.